You're a unique audience. Uh, most people believe in the accidental theory of history. In the past, the enemies of the people have thrown animals into, dead animals into wells, or they put out a salt lick in order to uh, bring people out to be cold. And the technology of the tyrants is really advanced. I want to draw your attention especially to the conspirators themselves. Um, we can battle and wrestle against their, their weapons, you know, forever, but we have to know if we're going to win this fight ever, we have to know who they are. A while back, Hollywood did an attempt to disguise who they are. Uh, they had a movie called The Good Shepherd. It was a pretty good movie, but it was exact opposite of what they are. It dealt with these skull and bones, and they're supposed to be, according to the movie, looking out for us, preventing us from the, the atrocities of communism around the world. And, uh, of course, right now, this good shepherd is leading its flock to slaughter, meaning us. And, again, debating a lot of the, the weapons they have is uh, not, not going not to win the battle. It's the conspirators themselves that we have to go after. We ourselves, the people here that, that got past the, the, the fraud and don't rely on the newspapers, are the ones that are going to have to strategize for the battle. You have to know who in your community is doing it. We've been in the Monterey Bay area over here. It's been an experimental area for the Agenda 21 and many other uh, projects, the Delphi techniques and the uh, Tavistock uh, science that has been brought out and used on the people in that particular area. We now call that Panetta Stan. Now, Leon Panetta is one of the most important uh, figures in uh, uh, politics, probably as much so as Henry Kissinger. He has been around, he campaigned for Nelson Rockefeller back when, back when Rockefeller was running uh, for president in the early 60s. He later was in the White House, the Nixon White House, and was brought in there being the Rockefeller representative. And Nelson Rockefeller was to be president, and that's how they uh, managed the Watergate affair. They got Bilderberger President Ford in, installed as president, and uh, Nelson Rockefeller as vice president. But unfortunately, the, the people rejected the, the re-election, and the forgiveness of Nixon created a backlash that they couldn't quite handle. But they had cleared the way earlier with the assassination of, of JFK, and uh, that, that was, uh, surprisingly, for the first time in, in, in decades, in a half a century, had the Republican controllers not controlled the out, out, outcome, and Barry Goldwater got nominated for president. So Leon Panetta was inside the Nixon uh, uh, White House uh, working uh, with, the, with the conspirators to get Nelson Rockefeller installed. Much later, he was in the White House as chief of staff of uh, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, of course, was trained at the, uh, in England. Uh, he was a Rhodes Scholar, benefited by Rhodes Secret Wills, uh, advocating a world government. Somewhat later, Leon Panetta was the co-chair with David Rockefeller III uh, on the Oceans Commission, advocating turning the oceans over to the United Nations. Presently, Howard Taft IV, Skull and Bones, is working with the existing administration, and you'll see on most of the uh, so-called conservative websites uh, alerting you to the fact that that's almost signed. Leon Panetta then became co-chair of an outfit that's uh, important, even though this is really a national audience. California represents, if it was a country, the seventh largest country in the world. There's an outfit put together by David Rockefeller's uh, uh, Chase Manhattan Bank, IBM, uh, the, the billionaires of the Rockefeller family called Common Cause. In California, they have an extension of it called California Forward, of which Leon Panetta was co-chair. Chair. They are supported by a group of uh, foundations, the uh, Irvine Foundation, the Packard Foundation, the Hawes Foundation, all the foundations that do their, their creation of uh, products overseas, they come over here and they're tax exempt here. You heard Stan talking about the 35% tax on corporations. Well, these people are, are exempt. And they use their funds, they set up community foundations, in Santa Cruz it's a community foundation, again Packard and a couple of local uh, wealthy people who they probably play golf with. But these are the, uh, the networks that they're setting up in each and every community to do their culling. 
Agenda 21 is the Sovietization of your local communities. The, Cal the California Forward, this particular group, Leon Panetta was a co-chair of, is financing in California, they're adding a service charge, a service tax. In California, there's only sales tax, but now they're gonna add a 4% service tax, and next time you go to a beautician, you hire a landscaper, uh, you have a repair. The people in our community, they're both Republican and Democrat. Senator Bruce McPherson, he was appointed by Arnold Schwarzenegger as State Attorney uh, Secretary of State, who brought in the Diebolt machines in order to control your votes. He is running for uh, county supervisor in our district presently, and also the county tax collector, Fred Keeley. Fred Keeley was on the staff of Lee, uh, Sam Farr. Sam Farr is a congressman who flies the United Nations flag in the congressional office in Washington, D.C. He now occupies a seat formerly held by Leon Panetta. This is all connected, it's all concatenated, and you need to know this and you need to know the history of this. If, by going back to uh, the very founding of the Skull and Bones back in 1830, 1832, you had Alphonse Staff and uh, William Russell. Alfonso Staff ended up uh, as a uh, Secretary of War. His son, William Howard Taft, ended up as Secretary of War. Then he became president. Uh, during the Spanish-American War, which was a false flag, in which our battleship was sitting in, in the Cuban harbor, uh, blew up. In fact, our battleship didn't give the, the normal notification of, either, of arriving, which is, was typical in those days. And that created the uh, Spanish-American War. William Howard Taft, Skull and Bones, was the uh, governor of Cuba and then of the Philippines for a while before he became president. He also created uh, the League to Enforce the Peace, which was the, uh, the inchoate form of the League of Nations. And during that time, U.S. Senate failed to vote the League of Nations in. And that caused them to create the Council on Foreign Relations to lobby the people and the Senate so that wouldn't happen again. So in 1945, when it came up, uh, it would be passed uh, overwhelmingly. Now during the times, a lot of things happened in the uh, 1911. This was the time in which they were setting up the Federal Reserve System. The uh, man by the name of Daniel Coit Gilman member of Skull and Bones, was at one time the head of the California University system. He was driven out actually by a publisher in San Francisco, a socialist publisher who was part of the Grange uh, system in, in the state of California. Uh, at that time, Daniel Coit Gilman went to John Hopkins University, and there he created the graduate schools, and he would take the people that he was training uh, for uh, across the United States, and he would send them to German, German universities. It turns out that Skull and Bones is a branch of an Illuminist organization that has its roots in Germany. And of course, they were very, when there was a break in in the Skull and Bones uh, tomb in New Haven, Connecticut, they found paraphernalia, a lot of Nazi paraphernalia. The the fact that they keep us divided in a Hegelian uh, situation where we're always fighting each other rather than them. We're always chasing the, the noise in the bush or, or, the, uh, or the, the, the diversion. In the early 1900s, there was a Red Cross mission that went to, the, went to Russia. Um, it was sent uh, out, of, out of New York City. And the, one of the people in that particular mission, uh, Raymond Robbins, in his book, Decision to Intervene, Soviet-American Relations, he said, I am the servant of William Boyce Thompson. Let us assume I'm here to capture Russia for Wall Street. William Boyce Thompson was a director of the Federal Reserve. Uh, he also, when he died, he left his money, and you need to write this down because it's important, because we can't wrestle all the things they're throwing at us unless we know who they are. The Skull and Bones is also referred to as the Brotherhood of Death since the late 1800s. You can find the book, America's Secret Establishment, I think on Stan Monteith's table out there. It is also a free download. There's no excuse for not knowing it. He left his money, Phillips Exeter, 
and it's a member of the 10 schools admission organization. You need to know that. It, it shows up every time. These 10 schools are the ones that prepare the enemies that you have to deal with. And if we're going to win, we, know, we need to know where they live in our community. We need to know how that influence won. You'll see that PG&E has a contract with uh, ICLEI, which is a front for the World Bank. I've got a copy of their, their tax returns here that was filed in Boston. Uh, and it says under their, uh, their mission statement, it's to impose Agenda 21 not only for the environment, but for social and economic reasons. But everything your politicians will tell you is it's economic and green. It is not. You read the book, Agenda 21, uh, that came out of Rio, and um, it says that they want to affect N, uh, that came out of Rio, and um, it says that they want to affect every human action, what you eat, what you wear, who you elect as politicians. Virtually, Rockefeller family has been in this for, for a very long time. They put together the University of, uh, at Chicago. They put together a group called 1313, which is an address at the University of Chicago. And there's a network of semi-professional organizations called the uh, International uh, City Managers Association. They have one for, for finance, and they have one for governor's conferences. But there's a, a cluster of these organizations that was formed there. Some of them have gravitated to Washington, D.C. or a couple other large cities, but they're still under that control. The man they put in that control was a man by the name of uh, Mr. Uh, Miriam. And Miriam's book, Charles Miriam, wrote in Making of Citizens, published by the University of Chicago. He writes, in Russia and Italy, for example, under Soviet and fascist rule, a different type of loyalty must be gener generated. This necessity has been the mother of many new and interesting innovations. The red flag and the international international are symbols of great specific value enlivening the general theory of social order. So again, it is the very rich that have created communism, whether it was in Russia or uh, domestically, or when they're talking to each other. A book written by the head of the Communist Party, Benjamin Getlow, talked, and what he says in here is the most important commun American communist that ever lived. And he's talking about the man, uh, Robert Miner. Now, Robert Miner has a cartoon, many of you have probably already seen if you picked up uh, Creature from Jekyll Island. And it has, in 1911, it has Karl Marx shaking hands with the head of Chase Manhattan Bank, J.P. Morgan, uh, uh, Mr. Roosevelt, and uh, Rockefeller. Now what this most important communist of all times has said is that Lenin could not afford to tell the whole truth about the entrance of the non-Bolshevik in his government. He must maintain the intransigent front. The main fact in the new situation, the so-called nationalization of Russian industry has put the insurgent industry back into the hands of the business class who disguise their activities by giving orders under the magic title of the People's Commissars. That sound anything like the United States today with uh, Obama nationalizing industries and the commissars that he's appointed? He goes on to say there's a difference now. The business types ride in the same fine automobiles as before, and the same fine mansions are again managing the old industries, but with more authority than, for, than ever before. Now the people's commissars are servants of the proletariat, and the iron discipline of the army under the red flags has been developed in order to protect them against all annoyance. Now you can't even protest the president or anybody else now without going to jail for 10 years. He can black bag you. Have you disappear? You don't have a right to an attorney. Trial, what's a trial? He can assassinate any American, any place on earth. And to see your city councils and your board of supervisors and your state legislature and your congressmen not get hysterical about the situation is crazy. You are under the gun and they are murdering you. You don't have to wait for a chip under your skin. This is an incarceration grid. It is militarized, and the altering of those radio waves can affect you, just as Deborah said. They can make you dizzy. They can make you nauseous. They can make you unconscious. 
It doesn't have to be on your house. It can be in the neighborhood. They can affect whole neighborhoods. It's important to get those things off your house. But you have to know who's doing it to you. They've declared war on you, and they're killing you. And they're doing it in such a way as you're paying for the funeral. They don't have to come with the trucks. Your family's taking care of it. You know how it is out there already with the increase in autism and Alzheimer's and the rest of it. They're killing you now. And there's a tabloid over here I want you to grab before you go out. It's a 16-page color tabloid, and we, we address the press or the responsibility of the press. And it's an essay by John Swinton, who was talking before the press. He was at a, 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 where they were celebrating someplace, and somebody toasted to the independent press. And he was outraged by that, and then he stood up and said, you know, each one of us is, you know, we're, we're, we're prostitutes, and you know you'd lose your job tomorrow if you offered your own opinion, and that's true. There is a group called the Institute for Journalism and Natural Resources, and this is an outfit that controls the information you get about smart meters, about climate change, which is the so-called reason for all of Agenda 21 for all the expenses, for all the incarcerations, all the, all the meddling and all the taxes that they're, they're getting out of you. Well, it says here that 85% of the United States news organizations are part of this. 327 news organizations, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, AP, Dow Jones, Reuters, UPI, Mother Jones, The Economist, the, you know, the Fabian Economist, virtually all. I, I could spend the rest of the time here just naming off the newspapers. Who's paying for it? Well, one, you are, because it's uh, through the, uh, uh, well, the, the Joyce Foundation, uh, the Ford Foundation. The head of the Ford Foundation, if you get the book, that uh, Dr. Uh, Stanley Monteith has reproduced on foundation, very valuable, the first time and the last time, and it was cut short, the investigation of the foundations. The head of the Ford Foundation said that their purpose was to so alter the United States that it could comfortably merge with the Soviet Union. They weren't working to alter the Soviet Union to merge with, with free enterprise. No, it's the other way around. These are the people of foundations, of tax-exempt foundations. And they have community foundations in every county and, and, and community across the United States. Find out who these SOBs are and keep track of it. Uh, use a local public podiums where you got two, three minutes before your county board of supervisors and cities. Why you still can't? Uh, the, the Russell Family Foundation, the Royal Bank of Canada, the McKay Papers, uh, the head of that is Gary Pruitt. He's also vice president, president now, I think, of Associated Press. He was head of the Irvine Foundation that is part of the uh, consortium of organizations uh, that support California Forward. You got to know these people because these are the enemy. These are the people that are killing you. They usually get, you know, it's not the poor dummy that comes out and fastens one of these uh, uh, Gestapo meters on you your house. You've got to know who these people are. They set how the cities are managed. They took it away. They think the, the uh, progress goes to science. Instead of people being individual, the cities are supposed to hire this manager that's been trained at the university, some other you know, school someplace. They're taking away your independence at every level, and even after they've accomplished that, they're moving the authority to each region, whether it's like uh, AMBAG or AB, uh, uh, organizations, uh, people watching this, that would be the uh, Monterey Bay Area Association of Governments, which would be AMBAG. But in our area down there, the, there's one representative from every elected body, whether it's city or county, and they meet, and it's not covered by the newspapers, and they're making laws that tax you and fine you and control you and, and do all kinds of things. So it's out of sight that all of this is already going on. They're getting ready for the kill. They're not only getting ready for the kill, they've already started. Um, again, the, the, the California League of Cities honored this Charles Miriam. Here's another one of his books, one of his statements. This is a role of politics and social change on page 112. He says, in essence, organization is not roughness as some th seem to think, but management. Man may be uh, influence in many other ways and besides a, a strap for behavior through organized medication, you hear that? Through diet, through training, through education, 
The human system may be reconditioned through the glands, perhaps a bloodstream, a vaccination, hey, everything is here, or through any one of a thousand minor manipulations, stimulations, grad graduations that move silently and subtly to their appointed end. The strategy of control leads to the side of science. And that includes the radio waves that can <laughs> kill you. Surrender. Take your, take your initiative from you. He talks further in the, in the role of politics and social change. He says there will always be streams of red blood and acres of flesh and, and masses of bones and things like that. And he says he doesn't shy away from that, but he says it really, you know, everything leads to the side of science. They, these people are called, the core of it is called the Brotherhood of Death for a reason. During World War I, the head of the Secretary of War was Henry Stimson. And... They, they had no aversion in getting in a war that we shouldn't have been involved in. It was to create this world government. It is Agenda 21. They're there now. They're in your community and on your city council. And those are the ones you need to get rid of. But you need to know the, um, the head of the Secretary of War during World War II was once again uh, Henry Stimson. He brought in an assistant uh, McGeorge Bundy, and he's a member of Skull and Bones. He's got a brother, William Bundy, who was the head of the CIA. And again, go, go see the movie, go rent the movie, The Good Shepherd. It does two things. It shows, one, that they're steeped in Satanism or the occult. They crawl into a coffin. They use human remains in their rituals. Another book that's probably been in your face a number of times. It's called Philip Drew Administrator. The man was like a Henry Kissinger at the time, the person that wrote this. It is a blueprint. A lot of the Agenda 21 is now re being referred to as blueprints. But this is a blueprint for dictatorship. And they talk and brag on how easy it is to get access and to, to use you. In this book, there's advocacy. This was uh, written in, again, uh, 1911, 1911, 1912. They advocate a North American Union. They advocate a dictatorship. This was written by Colonel House, who was instrumental in uh, putting together the League of Nations. He was uh, Woodrow Wilson's right-hand man. Woodrow Wilson referred to him as his alter ego and that they thought alike and, and, and did everything the exact same. They set their clock five minutes fast, so they're always ahead of you. Same. The, uh, during this very uh, active period, uh, when the Federal Reserve was being set up, the first head of the Federal Reserve was Pierre J. Pierre J is also a member of Skull and Bones. Now, this, it's amazing, because Skull and Bones is only one secret society. They only induct 15 people per year, which means there can probably only be about 700 people alive at any one particular time. And not all of them joined to participate in, in this evil. Some of them gravitate into actually a regular commerce or, or, or make some uh, distance from it. Now the person that most advanced the information on skull and bones I happened to rent to in the early 1980s. And that was Dr. Anthony Sutton. He had written three books uh, for the Hoover Institute, which talked about the transfer of technology to the Soviet Union from, from its beginning. And the lady, the very brave whistleblower, uh, Charlotte Ezerbet, who has written uh, Dumbed Down America, um, sent a box of papers to Dr. Anthony Sutton because she recognized the thread of what he was saying and saw that a lot of her father and her grandfather's friends were among those people that were transferring this, this technology to the Soviet Union to create an enemy that would chew up the world and, and kill millions and millions of people and to create a NATO. At the same time they were supporting, creating the enemy, they were building a defense for it, the Marshall Plan and the, this defense, the NATO. All of those things are now the world army. The United Nations name was used before it was founded uh, officially in San Francisco in 1945, 
with Alger Hiss and the 87 people that, that showed up there. I think there was you know, something like 70% of them are members from the Council on Foreign Relations. The first acting Secretary General was uh, Alger Hiss. And again, a lot of people think, again, in terms of communism, this is the way I've been brought up. It's hard not to think that way because they've always been portrayed as the enemy. But some of these people that we accuse as you know, communist spies were really just the conduit. They just got trapped in, uh, trapped along the line versus going back and forth. It was Averill Harriman who was ambassador to the Soviet Union for much of this period. The Brown Brothers Harriman supplied a lot of the monies to them and also uh, Sutton wrote a book uh, about uh, Wall Street and the uh, rise of Hitler. And uh, you'll, you'll find that information in there too. Spread from the United Nations is is the key in every place, everywhere. You'll see that Leon Panetta, uh, when he was Secretary of War, Secretary of Defense as we call it now because of, you know, somebody's out there fighting us but we're everywhere, uh, created, uh, went, to, went to war against Libya and he used the authority of the United Nations. Again, where, you know, what, what happened to the ACLU? What happened to uh, the so-called legitimate left? And, you know, where's the legitimate right? They, they're, they, they've, they've gone on vacation somewhere. Um, but he was there for the fiction and the facade, or, or the, the, the play of the capture of bin Laden. And that, that play, they, they kept changing the lines, you know, week, day after day and week after week. And I know we all have to suffer with people out there that read the newspaper and, and actually <laughs> repeat that stuff back to us, even though it changes every day. It really is Orwellian. It's out of 1984. And uh, since that time, Leon Panetta uh, has moved you know, from the CIA to uh, the Department of War um, and is key in every place, uh, shape, and form. In the state of California, there's also a consortium, an organization of like the Edison Company and PG&E and the San Diego uh, Gas Company. And you will find, if you Google that, it's called SEEC. And if you Google that, you'll find among this consortium, at the very top, it says ICLE. And then there's an Institute for California Reform, something like that. Um, but these are the ones that really control the policies. PG&E is huge in uh, funding uh, various organizations that are against your, against your interests. And they're using the rate to payers' money in order to do it. They were there in Rio. They're at all of these international organizations. They're involved in AMBAG, which again, the Association of Monterey Bay Area Governments. In fact, the Monterey Bay Area of Governments turned the whole of their energy policy over to PG&E. And they're being led you know, by, uh, by ICLE. So no policy is being made that doesn't come from outside your community. And your city council and your board of supervisors are not representing you. In our county, in April, they submitted something that would be equivalent to the Enabling Act that Hitler had uh, prepared. 62 pages, uh, open-ended, creates all kinds of committees. It, it controls the uh, control of uh, sales of real estate, any business. Um, it's, it's absolutely open-ended. And the money going to uh, to the people in this. In fact, the, the person that was put in charge of it used to march with the communists up in San, San Francisco. He's got uh, two signs of my opponent. I'm running for supervisor in Santa Cruz. He's got two signs of my opponent in, in his lawn. Um, he works for foundations in the grant making business. So it, it, again, it's real easy to identify. And we had a, we've had some pretty good breaks in, in the recent campaign. We've been able to penetrate uh, the newspapers. All three of our newspapers are owned by the Bill Gates Foundation. They own the major stock in the Mercury, uh, the Santa Cruz Sentinel, and the, and the Santa Cruz Monterey papers. We had an independent paper that used to be part of the New American Movement way back in the, in the 1980s. And surprisingly, they carried all of our copy, gave us uh, prime billing, and uh, they're more involved in commerce than are the, uh, the big major dailies. It's a weekly newspaper. And they have more ads, and uh, I, I guess they forgot their roots. <laughs> but uh, It's worthwhile to get your information before anybody and everybody, and you're under the gun, literally. They're 
turning up the juice were strapped to that you know electric uh, uh, killing machine. So try to wrestle yourself out of that as fast as you can. But you've got to get this information to other people. Know who these SOBs are. There's a lot of information out there. There's an excellent book called Who's Who of the Elite. Very valuable. It'll give you members, uh, members of the Bilderberger, Trilat, Council on Foreign Relations, CFR. You need to know that. And you need to know where these people live. They know where you live. They know what you're thinking, what you're talking, where you're going to go, what you're doing. You need to know right where they are. And like Alex Jones has been doing this last week at the Bilderberger uh, meeting in Virginia, putting them on notice. You have to put them on notice. You've got to challenge them. You can't keep chasing everything they, they throw at you. Um, duck. I mean, you've got to duck from the stuff that they're throwing at you. But you've got to go after them. This is a war. And you need to be engaged in it. And you need to, there's no sense saving a, a, much for your future. You've got to put your assets that you have to, uh, together and uh, work with like minds. Sometimes there's not a lot of like minds out there. Um, but get involved. They're, they are vulnerable because they're a 1% of a 1%. And if the rest of the, when the rest of the people figure this out, you're going to have a lot of allies. But there's only going to be a handful of you that can, can follow and help guide the people. Because you're going to have shock and awe like you've never seen it before once they get rolling. You're going to have the diseases. You're going to have the blackouts. You're going to have the food shortages. You're going to have the overhead dumps and the, the electronic. When the, when the power's not on, when, and when it's on, you're going to get zapped. <laughs> and when it's off, you're going to need candles. But um, it's, it's not a debate. It's there. It's as tangible as it can be. And there's been whistleblowers... Uh, like uh, Ezra Bet, like Anthony Sutton that has brought this material and made it mature. There's a, the, the lines are connected. Uh, there, there's no, no way around it. And again, I encourage you to use the, uh, the books, the DVDs that are out there. Don't go home without your uh, uh, tabloid. We've got a 16-page color tabloid that's making a incredible difference. We don't talk about left, right, or anything else. We talk about the issues. We give them the basics of the uh, Federal Reserve, how it occurred, where it came from, and how the central banking system is a, a crucial issue to all of this. Uh, we've got some radio ads out there. I'd like to give my website. Uh, it's called themuckraker.net and also arnoldistheanswer.com. And I want to thank my good friend, uh, Anthony Hilder, who showed up to one of my campaigns for state assembly back in 1966. And at that time, we put out some 47,000 paperback books door to door in a district that was two to one registered against us. We, home, we missed it by a point or two of winning that election. But we have always used material that will wake people up or leave a wake of, of people that are more informed, and that's what you have to do. You don't buy bumper stickers and billboards and, and things that are ephemeral. You buy something that's going to stick with people that uh, other people can build on. So if the information's out there, it doesn't help just one candidate, it will help them all, which is one of the more positive things I see about the Ron Paul campaign and some of the slim gems, at least on economics and a few things. He's uh, done a great job. And of course, we all want everybody to say everything about everything, and it's uh, kind of hard <clears throat> to, to do that out there. I have <clears throat> no aversion. <clears throat> I have no aversion to saying everything <laughs> about everything. So I, I thank you for coming. And <clears throat> One last little note <clears throat> was about Stasi, which was the East German police. And they're talking about how many people were involved. The KGB used about 480,000 full-time agents to oversee a country of 280 million. <clears throat> that was one agent per 5,830 people. In Nazi Germany, there was one officer for every 2,000. For the Stasi, there was one secret policeman for every 166 people. And in their case, they had at least one spy watch, one in every 66. This is worse. These are spy meters. These are Gestapo meters. What's happening to you here, together with the actions by the president, meaning they can black bag you, assassinate you, not give you a trial, 
and are doing all this to you, this is war. So treat it like a war. Thank you.